So this is a fun one because I actually get to talk about my wizard build. Um, and I have a lot of fun with the wizard. It's not my first class. Uh, it's not the first class I always play. Uh, it's usually somewhere between like third and fifth. Uh, it just kind of depends on the game I'm playing. Um, in the case of, uh, I remember Baldur's Gate 1, the wizard was I think fifth. Baldur's Gate 2, it was the second. The reason it jumped up to second in Baldur's Gate 2 is because the... Uh, Underdark spellcasting arena against the drow was just so much fun and the first time through I took the the cleric mage girl with the wings why can't I can't remember Aerie is that her name anyway um, I've always loved the wizard I've had a lot of fun with wizards over the years they're never my first playthrough and that's the same case here this is actually my if you want to count the act one stuff I've done probably 25 30 playthroughs but uh, in terms of going through a full playthrough I'm going to see if I do a full playthrough of this, but I'm on the wizard now. This is the third character I've done. My sorcerer I did up through the end of Act 1, and then the Xbox version came out. And at the time that the Xbox version came out, uh, I wanted to use custom mode because I wanted to turn dice rolls off and things of that nature. Um, and they wouldn't let you mod an existing saved game with custom modifiers. The, the patch 6 that just dropped has changed that, and you can now modify an existing game which ah. um, so I went ahead and started a wizard as, as my third character and I've really been enjoying it um, I think I like it more than the sorcerer um, if I'm being honest uh, and I'll probably talk about that in a future video why I think the wizard is a I think for me subjectively and that's the key here subjectively not objectively subjectively I think the wizard is like one of the best classes in the game because of the diversity of all the things you can do but other people will say the bard you know other people will say the paladin sorcerer like everybody's got a build that they love which is why I say it's it's subjective but I'll do that video if not tomorrow the day after um, so today I just want to talk about my wizard build I am early on into the game and I'm gonna talk about where I'm at right now and kind of where I'm planning on going with this character so we are level six we are in the um the uh nasty place don't come here <laughs> there's the shadows of darkness man um it, it's not a good place so um shadowlands you have to come here eventually um level six um and i am playing on a uh, custom mode that basically just has balance settings so all my hit points and all those other things are just regular normal rules um, nothing fancy there I just have dice rolls turned off and stuff um, but we can look through here um, I went with a high elf just because I wanted to get the elven racials and also I just like the look of this guy I just think he looks really really cool um, but like pixie blessing that's that's just a current buff um but all these different things uh, reactions of course um by the way counter spell is an amazing ability that you absolutely have to get as soon as you can the problem is it takes a third level spell slot uh there are items you can get later on in the game which have counter spell on them which allow you some additional triggers which is really nice but counter spell is a must-have ability for the wizard as soon as you get it take it like it is a must-have against um, some of the big bosses of the game and it's just some of the general encounters where you get spellcasters who can do some really nasty stuff um, in terms of fireballs and ice storms and cloud spells and all sorts of other crazy stuff that can really wreak havoc on your group so counter spell gotta have it um, anyway Let's get into the stats. I went with 10, 14, 14, 18, 10, 12. Um, now, I didn't start off that way. Um, at level 4, um, I believe it was 4, Choose, you, know, you get to choose the uh, two additional stats. So the original character creation looked slightly different than this, but the objective was to get to here. Um, 10 strength, 14 dex, 14 con, 18 intelligence, 10 wisdom, and 12 charisma. I don't need strength. I don't mind decks for a little bit of armor class, uh, constitution for some extra hit points, uh, but yeah, 18 intelligence, wisdom, don't need it, charisma, a 12, just so I have a slight bonus uh, in certain scenarios, 
Um, so that's where I went with the stats. Now, as far as like what's on my spell bar, like right now, um, let's go into my spell book. We go to prepared spells. I keep magic missile locked and loaded. I've got mage armor because it's useful to keep on me. I've got feather fall as a general utility spell because we use it in many places. Um, Thunder wave is, I kind of use this as an oh shit ability. It's like when things get too close, I can use that, but I also have Misty Step, so this is, you know, this is kind of like if I've already used up all the other things, um, and I've got multiple things incoming, or right around me or something, and I've already used Misty Step or whatever the case may be, um, I've already burned up those spell slots, then I would use Thunder Wave. Um, Chromatic Orb I keep on hand is for situationals, because it does the different types of, of um, damage, so you could do, like, uh, fire damage... Ice damage, um, electric damage, poison damage, acid damage, so on and so forth. It's a nice, it's a nice spell, especially when you're dealing with things that have different resistances. Um, so I like to keep it in there. And it doesn't do, you know, it does a chunk of damage. Um, it's nice. Same thing with Melf's Acid Arrow. I think this is a generally just a good spell to have in your repertoire for damage. It does a good chunk of damage plus acid over time. Um, and even if it misses. Uh, the the target still takes half of the initial damage, which is the that's it's worthwhile having that on your spell bar in my opinion. Um, oops, I went too far. I went in the wrong direction. Um, blindness uh, is incredibly useful, and what's really funny is I never paid attention to blindness when I played my first playthrough because I was playing on explorer mode, which gives you bonuses and you don't really have to worry about a lot of the mechanics because you can just kind of you know boss fights are still kind of hard. But it's not, you don't have to really pay attention to all the things. In normal mode, balanced mode, which is what I'm playing on with some tweaks through the custom, um, you do have to pay attention to this stuff. So uh, the first time I got hit with blindness, we had, I don't, it was a boss mob fight, and she got three out of my four characters with blindness, and I couldn't do anything. It was just like, oh my god, this is an amazing spell. It blinds creatures. And then uh, attack rolls against it have advantage, and they attack with disadvantage. So you literally—I mean, there's—it's a con save, you know, so they can roll a saving throw against us. But if you land it, they're blinded, and you immediately get attack rolls, you know, advantages, and they get a disadvantage, which means it's—it's—it's um, it's, it's pretty cool. It's just really, really cool when that happens. Um, slow is also really, really effective. Um, targets up to six creatures and slows the movement actions are affected and their AC and dexterity saves are reduced by two. This is a general spell if you're getting overwhelmed um, with you know just tons of mobs. Um, I keep this around for that. Same thing with um, fireball. Those two spells together um, I use for anything that's within that compact radius because um, the, the, between the two it's pretty devastating and then you could come in uh, with a counter spell as needed um, because this spell must be on your spell bar once you get it which I already talked about but that's what I keep handy right now at level six and that'll grow so I'll do another like in game wizard guy when I get towards the end this is sort of like a I'm not even midway um, well I'm midway um, anyway um, then I have light uh, ray of frost mage hand an acid splash and then I have arcane recovery which is extremely helpful um, it's behind my head if you, you can't see it replenish spell slots while out of combat you cannot restore spell slots above fifth level but it's great for general stuff from fifth level below and honestly everything from third level and beyond is pretty powerful anyway quick commercial break everyone to celebrate and give thanks to all of these amazing people who keep me on the air full time really appreciate the support all you got to do is join as a member you get access to private videos you can also do super thanks on any upload or super chats and stickers on any live stream or premiere you see and beyond that don't forget we're multi-streaming over on twitch now so you can support over there as well thanks so much to everybody let's get back to the video at hand um, and when you're getting into the beyond fifth level category, um, that that's some serious magic, serious magic, sir. Um, but that's generally what I keep on my spell bar. Those are the general stats. 
that's the character so far. Um, I'm happy with it, and I'm keeping, once I get it, um, I've got Raider Invisibility, Fire Shield, Dimension Door, Blight, Banishment, all ready to go for as soon as I ding to level 7, and I can memorize the level 4 spells. Um, I took Evocation because I wanted to primarily be able to be a damage dealer, um, but I do use what I have available. Um, and of course, I can always go in here and just pick from things as needed. Um, other spells I could tell you that are really good to have. Um, where's it at? Uh, Sleet Storm's great for breaking concentration. Stinking Cloud is great for, um, I believe it's actions. Um, and if possible, keep Misty Step on. Um, I don't have it on at the moment for this particular area because we were doing a fight and I needed to have it out. Um, but it's great to have. And then, you know, first level, uh, I don't really think all of these are that great. Um, sleep's worthless after a certain level because it only affects targets up to a combined 24 hit points. And once you get into, once you get into territory where the mobs have more than 24 hit points, it's just a useless spell. So we are at, we've been at that point for a while, so I don't use it. Um, but Magic Missile is always good to have, uh, Featherfall is always good to have, Thunder Wave is always good to have, and then Chromatic Orb. I mean, I keep all of those because they have scalability or they're great utility. Featherfall is incredibly useful, um, but uh, Misty Step, I cannot tell you how good Misty Step is. Where is the Stinking Cloud? I always, do I, I don't know if I have, I don't see it at the moment. I can't remember what the icon looks like, but um, it's great because of the um, affects the actions and everything else of, of mobs. Um, but that is my wizard in a nutshell. So hopefully you've enjoyed. I will be doing more guides as I get deeper into the wizard and I get deeper into this playthrough. I'll do some spell casting content as well. So stick around for all of that. Um, more to come. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Don't forget the playlist below because it's got like over 400 Baldur's Gate 3 videos, daily streams, and of course Discord trying to think of all the things I need to say. <laughs> There's a Patreon if you want to get a copy of my latest fantasy novel. Links are down below. I'll see everybody in the next one. Stay safe and happy gaming.